In today's series, Tips to Selling Your Home, today's topic is how to pick the best offer in a multiple offer scenario. And if you are selling your house, that's what we're talking about today. The first thing we always look at would be obviously the purchase price of the offer and the down payment. In today's market, if you price the house correctly or the realtor priced the house for you correctly, you should be getting offers within a few days at ask price or even above ask. The next thing we would want to look at is what are the terms of the offer? What are the terms that the buyer had put in place of the offer? For example, it could be days till closing, any contingencies, any requests, any timelines, anything that has to do with repairs or not repairs, appraisal or waiving appraisals, uh, a lot of different things. What's included with the property? What are they requesting that you would include with the sale? Very careful also, a lot of times I see that sometimes homeowners that are selling might have some very expensive light fixtures that they want to take with them and replace with just ordinary and that probably is something that you should have had in your listing when you listed it so you gotta be very careful what the buyer included into that because it could be very tricky and then if your realtor missed that part that becomes part of the sale if you sign on the dot and accept their offer. Then we want to look at their supporting financials. Now, if they are making an offer and telling you they're buying it cash with no mortgage at all, you want to make sure that you request proof of funds. You want to see an updated bank account that will support that entire price that they're offering to purchase your home and also have extra money for closing costs. And closing costs could run anywhere from three to even 6% of the purchase price. So do the calculation, add those numbers into it. Now, if they are purchasing with a mortgage, you really have to look into their mortgage. Is it a mortgage pre-approval or is it a mortgage pre-qualification? Usually does not go into a lot of researching and verifying tax returns employment and time of employment funds credit debt and such so a pre-approval is a little bit more extensive it shows that there was a lot that went into it to get that pre-approval so all the documents were verified by the mortgage broker my suggestion this is what i do but if you are selling on your own you could do it also then if you're selling for sale by owner, you could do the same thing. Get on a call, call the mortgage broker who signed on that mortgage pre-approval, have a conversation with them. I'm telling them that there is one of their potential borrowers who's making an offer on my property that I'm listed and selling, and I wanna verify their credit worthiness and are they really going to be approved for this loan? Had the mortgage broker did all the necessary verification before they got that pre-approval for them. And also in today's market is because the interest rates jumped double in a very short period of time, you want to make sure that the pre-approval that you are looking at is also recently dated because if this pre-approval was dated, let's say when the mortgage interest rate was 4%, and it is six right now, the qualifications could completely change the ability of the potential buyers who's going to get a mortgage to actually be approved for that much of a bigger monthly payment is really important right now. So I would also ask the mortgage broker, okay, which is your buyer that you're considering, what happens to this borrower when the mortgage rates go up to six and a half percent by the time they close or seven or let let's just say even the way that they are right now is that going to put that borrower into a different bracket and at that point they won't be able to qualify more for a mortgage so that is really important because once you accept an offer and you go into contract 
you pretty much took your house off the market to everybody else and you just working on the timelines on getting this to a closing. So due diligence is real. I can't stress this enough. Seriously, this is a danger zone right now because things are changing so quickly. So make that extra call. Make sure that your realtor does. In addition to that, even though that everything is checking out with the mortgage pre-approval, you still want to see proof of funds for the down payment that the buyer is offering to place on your property. So you want to see the proof of funds for that as well. The next thing we would look at is any contingencies that are being placed into the offer within the terms as well. And contingencies could be inspections and appraisals. So for inspections, many times the buyer in order for them to win the, the bid for your house, they might offer to waive the inspection. Waiving the inspection is great. Now, keep in mind, if you know that everything is fine with your house, really that shouldn't matter to you that much. But in any case, it's time that we're saving here. So if there's no home inspection, then we could just keep moving without waiting for that part of the process to be complete. Just keep in mind that anybody who waives a home inspection and they are possibly getting uh, FHA financing or VA financing, that waiving inspection may not work because that would be something that depends on them getting approved for the mortgage. There's a lot of things that are happening within this that requires a little more understanding and requires a professional like a realtor that understand how certain mortgages and financing with certain contingencies that are being waived may not necessarily actually work out that way. The other contingencies are appraisal contingencies. Same thing, an appraisal waiving contingency, which basically means that the buyer is willing to waive the difference between what they are paying for your house and what the appraised value is going to come back at. Sometime during the underwriting process, the bank will order an appraisal so an appraiser will come to your house and take pictures, measure, and compare it to other properties like same in the same location, very similar to yours, and they will appraise the property and provide that to the bank. So the difference between the appraised value and the purchase price, when a buyer's waiving appraisal, they basically telling you that they will cover the difference between the appraised value and the sale price. Now, if that's part of your offer that you are entertaining and thinking to accept, here's what you gotta look for. So you have to also, they have to show you proof of funds for money that's for the total down payment, money for closing costs, and the money for the gap, the appraisal gap, that they're financially stable and able to follow through with the terms of the offer and all the contingencies and the waivers. The next thing we want to look at is the closing date and the possession. So when are they telling you that they are going to be ready to close? Are they looking for a really quick closing, which means that that might hurt you and your plans because maybe you need more time to stay in the house. Are they willing to be flexible and tell you that they will close whenever it's convenient to, to close? But many buyers also are currently living in rentals. If they're living um, in a private house, renting a private house, most of the time they're able to go on a month to month and they're not tied up to a lease. However, Buyers who are currently renting in apartment buildings, they might be tied up for a lease and they might need to pay all the months remaining that they're not gonna live there. So that's 
extra money. So those questions are important to ask the buyer's agent or your buyer if you are selling for sale by owner before you commit and accept the offer. And the possession, when are they expecting to move into their house after closing? So if you are selling and buying at the same time, so you may not be so happy with giving possession to the buyer right after closing. So you might want to negotiate a post possession agreement, which means that after closing, you would remain living in the house for a certain amount of time when it is convenient to you with your plan. So if you, for example, need the proceeds of this house in order to buy another house or even make an offer on another house, then you probably want to ask for three months of time. This way, after the closing, you get your funds, you remain in the house, you don't have to move out, and then you will be going and purchasing another house and then you're not going to have a sale contingency. The next thing is, are the terms including a sale contingency? So a sale contingency would be now this buyer who's making an offer on your house has to sell their house first in order to buy yours. Now contingency does not mean that it's not a good offer. It just means that the buyer that's purchasing your house, they're in contract on their house and they have a buyer. So that buyer's financial stability, mortgage pre-approval, terms of the purchase, and all of these things will directly affect the sale of your house if this is the offer that you're looking to accept. So what I do in these situations is I will go to the contract that buyer who's purchasing this buyers who's looking to purchase my house. I will go to them and ask them to see their contract, their buyer's financials, speak to their buyer's mortgage broker and do all the due diligence of the buyer that's buying this buyer who wants to buy my house. This is what's going to happen. God forbid something happens to the buyer who's buying my buyer's house. It's a chain reaction and everything falls through. And that's a really bad situation to be in. And then last but not least, I've seen many times that buyers are looking to make offers sight unseen. They make offers on properties based on videos or based on photos. Maybe they just drove by the house. Personally, I don't recommend to accept an offer like that because then when the buyer finally shows up to the house, they're like, oh, that's not what I thought. It doesn't feel the same way. And a million different reasons that they will come up with just not to buy your house. So. Maybe in other markets where the market's not crazy like this, maybe at some point where we have more inventory than buyers or equal amount of inventory and we're not going to be dealing with multiple offers who are a lot more solid and don't have all of these contingencies and complicated terms and then maybe we can then feel a little bit differently about it because not much has lost. We're dealing with one buyer at a time, but personally, I always ask buyers, even if it's other brokers, buyers who they bring to my listing or my personal buyers, no, let's go look at the house. If you like it, then we'll make the offer. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, make a comment, consider subscribing to the channel and you can watch more videos on tips on selling your home.